I bow to all the seekers of truth. I do not know how to thank the Mayor of Oakland and Mayor of Berkeley for being so kind to give this certificate to me. I must say this is a wonderful country where people recognize something that is doing good work. Really remarkable it is. <coughs> I had been here before to Berkeley because everybody tells me that there are lots of seekers of truth in Berkeley. This is the thing has attracted me very much. But first of all we should know what are we seeking all these days. Once you start seeking it goes on like a rat race of seeking. Or have you been able to find something? So what do you have to find in your seeking? As you know, in all the scriptures it is being told that you have to know yourself. You don't know yourself. You don't know what problems you have within. People get into diseases, without knowing till it develops into a very serious trouble. <coughs> also they go on hurting others, being jealous with others, being in tension and stress. All kinds of problems come to them and they don't know why it happens. Why? What is the reason? So today I'm going to tell you how you have to know yourself. First of all, you must decide that you have been seeking, seeking, seeking and this is the place known for its seeking. It's high time you better come to the end of it and seek what you have been seeking and you get it. <laughs> That's the promise. First and foremost thing, When we are seeking, we should know what are we within ourselves. What do we know about ourselves is only through doctors or through psychologists or some people, which is very superficial knowledge about ourselves. In our depth, in our within, what do we have which doctors don't know is the parasympathetic nervous system, they don't know. Sympathetic system is the system by which when we work very hard, we run and do all kinds of things, the sympathetic goes into action. Heart will start beating fast. But what brings it to normal is the parasympathetic. And this is what we have to know within ourselves that it exists and it operates automatically. How it exists and how it works out, that's why we have to know. Moreover, <clears throat> what are we when you see the whole world is so full of violence, full of all kinds of nonsense that's going on and you can't imagine why people do it. What is the need to do all these horrible things in the name of God, in the name of religion, in the name of some political party or some sort of a name they must have to fight with each other, torture others, kill each other, all this works out through human beings, through people who are supposed to be at the top of evolution. Human awareness is at the highest point. So now what's happening to our awareness? Why do we get into jealousies, into angers, into all kinds of funny type of behavior which animals also don't do. Because we have freedom, we can do what we like. 
we can do what we like with ourselves, with others, but still we must know our vehicle better. We should know what is within us. And for that, there is placed within us a beautiful thing called Kundalini, which lies in the triangular bone, which is called a sacrum. That means Greek knew about it, that's why they call it a sacred bone. In the triangular bone it lies at the base of your spine and this is the one which is going to give you a real ascent. This is the one which is going to connect you to the all-pervading power of Divine Love. They have all talked about all power of God, Divine Love, all kinds of things. But we don't know where it is, where does it exist, how it works. If really it is there or not, also we are not very sure. So this power lies within your triangular bone. Can you show now? There are Agile All of you have this power within. It's not anyone who belongs to any nationality or to any culture, but everyone has this power within himself. But you'll be surprised how people have made such a horrible picture of Kundalini. And they say that when the Kundalini rises, you may go mad, you may shout, you must do all kinds of things. Because they have no authority to do it, because they don't know how to do it. That's why they make up a story like that and tell you, because they don't want to, to ascend, I think, or they don't know. They are incapable of awakening the Kundalini. But I must tell you that she is your mother, she is your individual mother. She knows everything about you. It's all recorded. Whatever was your past, whatever mistakes you committed, whatever aspirations you have, everything she knows about is all recorded there in a three and a half coil. But she's your mother, your own mother, and when you were born, your mother took all the trouble upon herself. She didn't give you trouble. In the same way, when this Kundalini rises, she doesn't give you any trouble. Now people are afraid even to talk about Kundalini because those who talked about Kundalini were, um, I don't know what sort of people they were. And it was such a misleading thing that they thought it's better not to talk about. But talk is talk. Talk is not everything. What has to happen, the awakening of this Kundalini? It's an actualization. It is not just talking, giving lectures, you do this, you stand like this, put your hand this way, your legs that way, it's not that. It's very simple that this Kundalini, which is responsible for your last ascent, your, <coughs> I should say, the last step in your evolution, this Kundalini is your own mother and she cannot harm. She can never do that. This is the fact I would like to tell you first of all. Because I know in America, all kinds of people have come from India. Those people also who were released from jail wore some sort of a dress and came here. They're all minting money, that's what they are doing, they're good at it. So if you have any understanding, about divinity you must understand that you cannot sell it and you cannot purchase it. If you can purchase some person, then such a person cannot be your master. He can be your servant, but not your master. So once you understand this point, 
It's very important for you people to know that it is not sellable because you know this is a consumer society and everything has to be sold but not spirituality. You cannot sell spirituality and those who sell spirituality are spurious people. They are not real, they are absolutely bogus people as they call them and you don't waste your energy and money on them. So now, we have before you this triangular bone and this Kundalini. And she rises through six centers. The seventh center is below the Kundalini. It is below the Kundalini and it protects the chastity of the Mother. Now those people who talk about sex as one of the instruments for ascent are absolutely befooling. Nobody has said that in any scripture as such. But suddenly they start a kind of a myth or fashion, I should say, or fad, and people get driven into it. So I've come to warn you about it that it has nothing to do with sex. But as Christ has said, you have to be like children when you enter into the kingdom of God. So your innocence gets awakened. Many people feel they have lost their innocence. You can never lose it. It comes back to its dormant. It might be bruised, it might be a little bit hurt, but it's all there intact. And you'll be amazed to see what you are, because you don't know what you are. So I would say you are not this body, this mind, but you are the spirit and that's what you have to become. Once you become the spirit, you will know what you are. You will know everything about yourself. But that to happen, you don't have to do any, any acrobatic thing, it's just very simple, wherever you are sitting it will work. But first tell your mind to stop a little bit thinking, because this mind has been reacting all the time, reacting to this, reacting to that, react with the result that Kundalini doesn't rise. But when she rises, she's wonderful. Your thought rises like that and fall down again, thoughts come up and fall down. They come from the future or from the past. Present you cannot be, you cannot be in the present. But when Kundalini rises, she elongates these thoughts and there's a space created it's called as pause, you can call it, in Sanskrit called a, as vilamba. So your mind stands at that place where you have thoughtless awareness. It's told by, also Jung has talked about it, that you get into thoughtless awareness. Patanjali has talked about it. But talking about it is not sufficient, as I told you, it has to happen. So first thing that happens to you, you become thoughtlessly aware. There's no thought, no reaction. For example, I see this beautiful carpet here, and if I react, I would say, oh, what a beautiful carpet. If it is mine, I would be worried, I should insure it. If it's not mine, I would say that um, how much they must have paid for it, to whom does it belong and all kinds of but supposing I'm in thoughtless awareness, then I just see it. While seeing it also, I'm just witnessing. And what I'm getting is the complete joy of the Creator who has done this job. Complete. Get filled with that joy. There's no reaction, it's just thoughtless awareness in which divine works. You don't have to then think about it. It all works out. Now this Kundalini rising <coughs> through six centers. Now you don't know you have any centers within yourself and you don't know how they are placed. After this rising, this Kundalini rises, passes through the fontanel bone area and becomes one with the all-pervading power 
of divine love, which is very subtle. And you also start becoming a subtler personality. When the Kundalini rises through these six centers, which are responsible for your physical, mental and emotional being, she nourishes them. She nourishes them with light and then she integrates them. And when she reaches this spot, she opens up this fontanelle bone area and becomes one with this all-pervading power. This is the actualization of baptism. This is the baptism. It's not just some priest comes, put his hand on your head. It's not the way. It has to be the actualization of this happening, which is for your ascent. This is the last breakthrough of your evolution. Whatever I'm saying, we can prove it also. It's not just talking. But these Kundalini, Kundalini's awakening, which takes place, it actually makes your hands speak. You start feeling the cool breeze coming out of your fingers and through your hand and here also. You feel the cool breeze, actually. And then if you know what do these mean, five, six and seven centers, in the same way five, six and seven centers. These seven centers are on the sympathetic nervous system. But when the sympathetic and centers, two of them, they mix, the central system is formed of parasympathetic. So when you get enlightenment, your spirit gets awakened in your heart. And in the spirit is the reflection of the complete divine force. Then you s become a really a spiritual personality. It's a reality I'm talking about. And in the light of the Spirit, your attention becomes purified. Not only that, but you know what is good for you and what is destructive for you. You give up all nonsense in no time. Of course, Sahaja Yoga has cured many people with all kinds of addictions, all kinds of problems, it's a fact. But that is, this Kundalini has done it, which is your own, which has enlightened your own chakras, your own centers and has brought forth this result. The second thing that happens to you, apart from your attention being enlightened, that you become a collective personality. People have talked about it, said about it, but it's in the books. Like a drop falls into the ocean, becomes the ocean. It doesn't mean that you are lost, you are nowhere, but your ego is lost your so-called pretensions are lost and what you become is a part and parcel of the whole, whole global race belongs to you. Then how will you fight each other? If you are part and parcel of the whole, nothing but love, nothing but compassion. We have now people in 86 countries and when I see them, I see the dream fulfilled because I've never seen them fighting or saying anything harsh to each other. They come from all kinds of religions, they come from all kinds of countries, every type of knowledge they have. Because you get the absolute knowledge, absolute knowledge. Now we don't know what is absolute knowledge is. For example, there is a person comes, say from India or from any other country, and says, I am a real great saint, I'll give you a great experience. How will you know that person is not telling you lies? 
and that she's not coming from the prison, how will you find her? You just put your hands when you are realized, when you are enlightened. Towards that person, immediately what you will get will be a hot breeze. That's the minimum. You might get tingling very bad. Perhaps maybe you might get a blister, one or two. So you'll be amazed how you judge people on your fingertips. Absolute knowledge about people, absolute knowledge about spirit, absolute knowledge about the whole global problems you get. You become collectively conscious. You can connect yourself to the whole world in a way that is spiritual. Whatever you want, whatever you think becomes very pure, compassionate and beautiful. That is what you are. That whatever you are, that you become. There's nothing to be said like this now. This instrument is before me. I am speaking to you. But supposing it is not connected, how can I? What is the use of this instrument? In the same way, you do not have that spirituality within you. Sometimes people must think that we are very spiritual. Don't believe in that. You must have absolute knowledge about yourself and about everything else. Also, we can say lots of things have happened in Sahaja Yoga. Like I know of somebody who was just a chartered accountant, knew only about finances. He has become a great poet. All kinds of balances work out. And it is so surprising the amount of aptitudes that you develop. You are amazed. You never knew you had these aptitudes with you. I have an Academy of Music in India and the people, even from America and other countries came and three months, only in three months, they started singing a very difficult raga called as Malkos. I was amazed, for which people have to work at least five to seven years. And here they are. So the, your capacity to absorb knowledge, to render it, is so much increased because you don't know your potential. You don't know what you are, that's the point. That's why they said that know yourself, know thyself, because after knowing yourself you'll have absolute knowledge, absolute reality and you won't live in the mental world, oh, this is this, this is that. I know many books have been written like that, about a person who was seeking and they end up into nothing. Your seeking should not end up like that. You should get what you are seeking. You have been seeking and seeking and seeking. And it's my greatest desire that you, the well-known seekers all over the world, because they say Berkeley University has the maximum number of seekers. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. You should come to the end of it. <laughs> there are many I know who came to Berkeley because they thought there are a group of people who are seeking. They went to meetings after meetings. When they got their realization, they wrote to them that we have found we have found the reality. So they wrote back all their friends and groups, oh, I see, that's, we see that you have found it your own way, we'll find it our own way. So he was so, this gentleman who came, he was so disappointed that still they are seeking. Seeking has become like a fashion, it cannot. It must come to an end. Your journey must come to an end. Otherwise, it will go on, one after another, so many will come and tell you, this is it, this is it, this is it. 
But the experience of the Spirit, experience of Realization is the thing you should ask. If somebody doesn't give you the experience, don't be satisfied with what they say, even with Me. I'm sure tonight all of you will have that experience, if you are truly seeking. And there are few things which I would like to tell you. Would you like to ask Me some questions? One by one. Yes, Madam? How does it play into politics? Huh? How does it play into politics? Oh, very great. Politics is, you see why the trouble of politics is? Because it is not pure politics. If the politicians become, think of that, if they all become realized souls, we'll have benevolent people. They'll be very different. We have some politicians in India who got their Realization. Also we have in Benin and uh, Ivory Coast, we have people who are Realized Souls and also politicians. Without Realization, if you are a politician, God save the people. <laughs> but we'll understand the politics of the collective. You will see what's wrong where, what you have to correct, what you have to do, how you have to behave. You won't run after voting, no. Your life itself will work it out. I'll tell you my father himself, he was a realized soul and he was a member of the Central Assembly, Constituent Assembly and Parliament, but he was a realized soul. So he came out of jail, and uh, there was the Vallabhai Patel who was there, one of the great politicians and a great man who was with Jawaharlal. <coughs> he wrote a letter to my father that, I want you to ha stand for election. So my father told him, he's just now come from jail, I'm not very well, uh, but if you want, I, I, I don't mind contesting the election. So at that time he sent three thousand rupees to my father, saying that this you can use for your propagation and honor. So my father sent it back saying, <coughs> Sir, if I have to spend money for my election, I better not contest it. And without sing spending a single pie, he contested the election and the person who was opposing him lost, forfeited his deposit. But his daughter, she was my friend, she helped my father. She told her father, Ki, you are nowhere compared to her father and I'm not going to support you in any way. That's how it comes. See, everything works out so well, but we must have many people in this to understand. If there's only one or two people, they'll torture them, they'll trouble them, do all kinds of… all saints have suffered. But now we have to be… all of us, we can be saints, we have to be saints. And we'll have saints who will be politicians, the whole world will change. <laughs> Any other question?
फरमा रहे कि recently she recently she became aware of you and saw you on the internet website and <laughs> oh i see and when she saw your face when she you are a very sensitive person i must say <laughs> i have a special uh, presentation for you right, thank you she wants to read a poetry huh? she wants to read a poetry she has written please aapke liye likhi hai इंटरनेट पे देख के इन्होंने ये लिखी अरे आपकी फेस में इन्होंने डिविनिटी देखी वेरी टचिंग सो लास्टली हाँ यस सर That's what I'm going to tell you. All right. <laughs> I'm happy you people have been reading quite a lot. <laughs> We have three nadis here. You can see it clearly. One is Ida, another Pingala, and Sushumna is the center. Ida and Pingala are responsible for the sympathetic nervous system, and <coughs> the central one, Sushumna, is for your ascent or the parasympathetic nervous system. Now the central one is the one is the Anahata Nadi. this goes up to the fontanel bone area and when the kundalini reaches there she makes the same sound as in the heart we have we call it anahat anahat means without percussion that is kabira has said that at the anahat sound when it reaches the so strara is this part limbic area then you know that you are about to enter into the kingdom of god you see in indian poets some of them were such great saints but they wrote mostly in poetry and it was not so much understood by people like kabir wrote 
she has used anath very much word that sayani ka sagai mayna ladi thi means they it can mean in the normal way is that my lover went away and i did not fight with him now how can kabir have these ideas but some people did feel that it is that but i told him told them that see sayya means the life is talking about his death that my life went away i never fought with it and now you follow it that way and they were amazed when i told them this meaning they said we never knew this was the meaning we studied hindi language we studied him i said you see the trouble is these poets were sitting there <laughs> and writing something of that level how can it enter into the mind of human beings that was the fact and in the same way anything you see you read now you will be very very clear for you to understand if it is a right reading of course and then you will know what everything means all these words has a great meaning and they are indicating despite that we can see that people have always misunderstood they have misunderstood everything in every scripture every saint everything they have misunderstood maybe because i shouldn't say they didn't have brain that they were brainless but that they had an angle to their brains and they saw everything with that angle and that's why they took <laughs> not a proper understanding anything else Thank you. I wanted to thank you for the gift you have given to uh, to the world. And he came to your program in Vancouver ten years ago, and has not been in touch since then. Oh, I'm again going to Vancouver. <laughs> See, I've been traveling too much. I'm now 77; will be 78 years of age. And somehow, my family people think that I shouldn't travel so much. But this time, I sneak through. <laughs> <laughs> you should come. You should come at, to our programs in New York. We have a very nice program now. Very nice program. Consider for us. Sixteenth. Huh? Sixteenth of June. Sixteenth. We are having a very very nice program. You are all welcome there in New York. We have a big land there, and you'll enjoy it very much. It is for your enjoyment that you get joy. joy is not double like happiness and unhappiness is pure is singular and you get the joy from the spirit and you get the peace complete peace just imagine human beings getting transformed like that what will happen to this world maybe from berkeley we might get a great force of this world to be changing because so many students come here from all over the world and if it works out you can change the whole world that's the importance of berkeley university <laughs> okay. is he asking a question mike mike tick mike wali theek hai realization all right we'll have the session for realization <clears throat> but i would definitely request people who don't want to have their realization to leave the hall because they create a little problem so it will be very kind of you to leave the hall if you don't want to have realization of course nothing goes wrong with you nothing will happen to you i assure you <laughs> you
You won't be jumping, nothing. <laughs> it's a very soothing effect. First of all, you will get your Realization and then I hope they have here a follow-up for which you have to go, not to pay anything again, I tell you, and <coughs> you can learn everything there about yourself, about others, for which you don't have to spend more than one month. Within one month you will be the masters, I know you will be. But whatever seeking you have had so far, forget about it. Forget completely about it and just try to know your own value. Know that you are very precious, very precious person and these precious people should not get disturbed or destroyed by wrong type of people. <clears throat> At the very outset, I have to say that you have to take out your shoes because this Mother Earth is very important. She takes our problems. You have to touch the Mother Earth with both your feet, keeping both the legs apart from each other. Thank you. Because they represent our two nadis, so they should be separated from each other. You will know everything, whatever you want to, if you have any sort of question, you will know it. But please, Promise me that you all will become great saints. That's very important. Otherwise, it's a waste of energy, <laughs> absolutely, for you and for me. You can, as I told you, I assure you that you should know your own value, your greatness. You can transform the whole world. <clears throat> now, what you have to do, it's all right, I'll manage. You have to put both your hands towards me like this, just like this, simple. Just like this. Now, firstly, I have to tell you that you should not feel guilty. That's also another fashion in the West, to feel guilty. <laughs> if you've done anything wrong, it's finished and gone, the path. I'm talking of the present. So whatever you have done wrong according to you, you need not correct it by torturing yourself. So please don't feel guilty at all, because if you feel guilty, this center catches and creates a problem for the Kundalini tries. So please don't feel guilty at all. I mean, if you are guilty, you would have been in jail, not here. <laughs> so have a very pleasant attitude towards us, very happy attitude towards us. So please don't feel guilty for anything. The second thing, very important, is for this center is here to forgive everyone. Now, one may say, very difficult, Mother, to forgive everyone. How can you forgive? I'll give you the logic behind it. If you forgive or don't forgive, what do you do? Do nothing, just the same. But if you don't forgive, then you torture yourself for nothing at all. That is why you must forgive. Just to say, Mother, I forgive everyone is sufficient. Just say that. In your heart you say, I forgive everyone, forget it. 
that will help very much. These two centers are literally constricted and that's why we have to be careful that we do not constrict it more. So you forgive everyone and you forgive yourself, very simple. Now your hands are like this, Now, please put your right hand towards me and left hand on top of your fontanel board again. And see for yourself if there's a cool or a hot breeze if it's coming out of your head. Just imagine, in such a short time it has worked out. So see for yourself if there's a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area which was the soft bone in your child. Please try with the left hand. Put the right hand towards me. You can move your hand up and down on the sides. And do not say it is there if it is not there, please. We have not to cheat ourselves but we have to be honest. Now please bend your head and see, you bend your head and see yourself, is there a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area? Now put your left hand towards me like this and with the right hand you see now if there is a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. It is hot because you have not yet forgiven. You have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive others. Because of that it is still hot. Bend your head and see for yourself. You can move your hand up and down and see for yourself this is a hot or a cold breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. Now please put your right hand towards you. Again and with the left hand you see if there's a cold, cold or hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. Just see once. Now, please put both your hands towards me, just like this because I told you the sympathetic is here, it has to work through sympathetic. Both the hands towards me like that. Now just see, please see that there is a cool or a hot breeze coming on your palm or maybe through your fingers, just see. Now you don't think, you watch me and don't think, just don't think. All those who have felt cool or hard breeze on their fingertips or on the palm or out of the fontanel bone area. Please raise both your hands. That's it. May God bless you all, may God bless you all. It's great. 
Some people didn't feel, very few, all right? But we'll see what's the matter, why they didn't feel, they will. No doubt, every one of you should get it. Very few didn't feel it. I'm very much thankful to you. I look forward to Berkeley people to work it out because you have a special position as seekers here and it should help the whole world. So may God bless you. There may be one music for you, with David. I don't know if you have musicians. Yeah, two, uh, two bhajans and one uh, for you. Uh, yes. We have musicians here, all right? Argentina ka, ah. usne gana bana hai. Kisne? Christian, Christian. Christian hai na? Christian. Christian. 